and welcome to Grandad Reviews. In this video, let's talk white balance. Now, white balance on your camera is basically just a way for your camera to actually make sure your whites are white and correct for the image. It also can be used in a creative manner as well. Now, if you shoot raw, you don't normally have to worry too much about white balance, but it is, in my opinion, a good idea to try and get it right in camera because when you import those RAWs into your editing software, it'll use the metadata that tells it what white balance is to give you that first view. And then you can alter it, obviously, from there. Obviously, if you're using JPEGs, then it's actually burnt into the JPEG and you've got less leeway. But yes, on RAWs, you've got a lot of leeway. Um, so let's have a look at what the white balance settings are in Fuji cameras. I've got the X-T3 here. A little bit rigged up, but uh, we'll get uh, into it. So I've got my white balance set on a function button. I just press the down pad. So as you can see, we start off with auto and I'll come back to auto. The next three are custom white balances, which you can create yourself by photographing a white card or gray card under the lighting conditions you've got so that in a studio you can be more certain of the white balance. Then got your Kelvins. So if you know the temperature of the lights, you've either got a, a meter that can do that or it says on the lights, you can input that level in here and as you can see the colors change and the lower the numbers, the bluer it gets, and the higher the numbers, the warmer it gets. Plus you can also use that in a creative way, so if you want a warm cast to your image, you can pick a Kelvin. Uh, somewhere around about 5,000, 5,300 daylight. You've then got presets, so then you've got daylight, you've got shade, You've got fluorescent lights, so if you're shooting under fluorescent lights and different types of fluorescent light. Then you've got incandescent light, so normal light bulb with a filament. And they also do an underwater one, so if you put it in a underwater housing, uh, then you can get the correct white balance. Now on all of these presets, you can, you've got a right arrow showing, and you can either press OK or the right pad and you come to the white balance shift. Now with the white balance shift you can alter that preset across a grid. So you've got red, green, yellow and blue. So you can change your blues and just dial in what you require on that preset and you can do that on all these presets just to dial it in on the kelvins you can do the same as well now if we go to auto what auto is doing basically is looking at the scene and trying to calculate the correct white balance now for stills it does a very good job and even if the light changes it'll reassess that white balance and hopefully get you the correct balance that you need. For video it's a bit more tricky because the white balance is going to alter as the light changes and it's sometimes very hard to try and match all the clips up. So for that case, or if you know you want to keep the white balance as you've got it, you can lock the white balance. Now what I've done, so if I pick the auto setting, I've set a, a function button 
that now locks that white balance. So it doesn't matter what the light does, it's locked on what I thought was correct. So I've locked it with just a button. You can go into the menus, button and dial settings, and then pick, I put function number one, and pick auto white balance lock onto that. That's the quickest way of doing it. It'll stay the same from shot to shot. I take the shot, the auto white balance stays on the screen. It's handy just to be able to lock it, and especially if you're doing video, if you've set the auto white balance, set a shot up, happy with what the white balance looks on screen, just lock it off. And then even if the light changes, the white balance is going to be the same and your scene will track properly. The other thing you can do with the auto white balance is you can shift it as well. So if you looked at the screen and thought, mm, it could do with being a bit warmer, you can shift it over to the warmer put it in at OK and then that will stay with your auto white balance continuously from shot to shot whenever you switch the camera on and off it will stay locked in that shift but the only way you're going to be able to get rid of that is to come back and center it out remember to press OK to, to reset it the good thing about that is you can use it in a creative manner so like in this situation here I wanted to cool it down. I can use that in a creative manner and use that shift. It just gives you more control over your white balance. Auto seems to get it right most of the time, but if you are having problems with the light changing and that, it's probably better to pick a preset. So pick a daylight preset, if you find it's still not warm enough, just warm it up a little bit, it'll be fine. Now on your custom ones, go to a custom preset, what you need to do, I can use this garage door. come across and it says press shutter for a new white balance but I can shift it as well if I want to it'll take a shot and you'll say completed do you want to set now that white balance is now locked in on custom 3 to whatever the camera meted on that white background there if I go into it, I can do a new white balance or I can shift. So I've, I want that a bit warmer. So I've shifted that custom white balance just using the shift selection. So you've still got some adjustment available in custom white balances as well. Uh, I use a custom white balance, I've set the white balance in the studio, put a grey card up with all the lighting in, took a custom white balance and left it. Um, my studio lighting doesn't change so I know the white balance is correct every time. So if in a situation where the lighting is not going to change, even outside if it says a very bright day and there's no clouds and there doesn't seem to be any chance of the light changing. You can do a custom white balance. If you're under shade and you know it's not going to change, you can do a custom white balance. Or you can just pick one of the presets. And with the auto white balance, again, as I say, you can lock it off with the auto white balance lock if you're happy with that. Or you can use it in a more creative way and go into the shift and move it around. Now on the Fuji cameras, I find that the auto white balance is quite good. It doesn't seem to get it wrong very often, but I do use that auto white balance lock quite a lot. So that's the uh, auto white balance settings on the Fuji cameras. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you want to see more videos like this, hit the subscribe button, want to be notified, hit that bell button. Till next time, see you later.